This is a quick tutorial for Sunchase One. It's at Sunchase RV Park off Grantham Road here in Foley, Alabama. There's your office. This is what the park looks like when you come in. That's another one of my properties called Sunset Breeze. Further down is Sunchase Two. But we're going to focus on Sunchase One. Uh, there's a little parking area. You don't want to pull ahead of that. You want to park here. Right behind that, I'm parked here right now. Um, and here's a quick tutorial on the outside. Uh, first thing I want you to do when you arrive is to go ahead and make sure your propane tank is connected and on. We usually keep an extra one here or around the back of the RV. But for now, we're gonna make sure we turn this on. And it even has a meter that tells us we've got propane. Next thing you wanna do is go over and make sure your water is turned on. This is spot number two. And this is the off position, sideways and on is straight to let the water flow. This is your, that's where your hose connects. You don't need to worry about it, but that's just where it is, is the top there. And this is where your black and gray tank strain is right underneath. Um, as you can tell, the pipe to the right is Gray tank, it's got a gray handle. Left tank is black tank, which is toilet. So if you wanna train that, you're gonna pull it, which it's empty right now, it's already been done. Usually it runs for a couple minutes. And this is your gray tank, which is your sinks and shower. So if your shower ever backs up, you gotta make sure you come out here and let that be pulled. Everything's already set up for you, so the pipe already runs down to the septic. You don't have to worry about any of that. And I'll go ahead and show you, we've literally replaced three of these on-demand propane tanks and had them bust so many times and replaced twice the hot water heater inside. So we've decided not to worry about it anymore. And we put this at a RV park that has full-size community hot showers um, that you can go to at any time. And never run out of hot water compared to the five minutes of hot water you usually get at an RV like this. And just to point to it, um, if you look down there, I'm gonna zoom in, that's the community center. And just to the left of the community center is the washer and dryer facility. And just behind it is the community bathrooms. So this is a StarCraft. And final detail, here's your lock box. This is how it opens. So it's gonna open down to up. Some people get confused. They think they have to tug on it, but it's like Pac-Man at the bottom and that's how it opens. And you only want to use the key in the top. That is locked. That is unlocked. It's important to remember when you take the key out, if you want to keep that door unlocked, keep it sideways. That way, if you take this key inside and then come back out to go to your car and come back, it'll be unlocked. Ideally, you wanna keep this key on you in your uh, keychain, or just keep it in the lockbox. 5% uh, of the, my guests tend to like go inside with the key. Um, what they do is, let me just demonstrate this so you understand it. It's locked, they put the key in, unlock it, pull it out, turn the key, because they don't think about it, go inside, put the key down. This will always let you out. By the way, this is your deadbolt if you're inside um, but this won't let you out they go to their car come back it's locked and the key is inside so be mindful always with the key don't believe me because I, I told you this is how all RVs work so for now I'm just gonna leave that in there here is a quick tour of the inside uh, people often tell me that my lights don't work um, you have to understand these are push-button lights every RV is different so my lights do work but you need to push them. So all these lights here are push button, um, except the little stove does have a little flip switch on it. But as you can tell, each one push on off, underneath on off, underneath on off. And I usually always leave that one on for when my guests come in here. But that's how you turn those lights on. 
Your fridge and freezer, of course, has its own light. And your freezer. And then if you go into the bathroom, uh, it has a light switch right next to the mirror. Uh, you'll see it better here, but there's your light switch right up here. Real easy to find. But that is your light switch. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you some features of the RV. This is your toilet. Uh, one of the most important things to understand is it's got a foot handle. If I push the handle halfway down, it adds water to the toilet. If I push it all the way, it empties it. Uh, it's imperative that if you go, number one, it's not that important, but if you're going number two and you have to use toilet paper, it's important that you add quite a bit of water before you do that, because if you do not, when you flush the toilet paper, will pile at the bottom of this toilet in the black tank and then it will clog very easily. So you want to have about that much water. If you're going number two and you use some toilet paper, try not to use too much. Uh, and, flush it. and that's how it takes care of that. Um, and we have a little sign to remind people. Uh, we actually prefer um, if you can use toilet paper and definitely never put tampons or feminine products or anything, always use the trash can. Uh, if you use tons of toilet paper, we recommend to put it in the trash bag and take it to the trash at the edge, back side of the RV park. But if you do put it in the toilet, just make sure you fill it up with water and that prevents a lot of problems. Um, we do have a shower in here, but since you don't have hot water, uh, we highly suggest to go to the community bathroom. If you're fine with cold showers, uh, feel free to use the one in the RV. We do have a smart enabled Roku TV. I just connected it. so. Uh, this is actually a brand new 32 inch smart TV that was just installed right for Memorial Day weekend in 2023. It used to be a 24 inch, but we just upgraded to a 32 inch. So that's how that works. A quick demonstration of how the range top stove works when you've got a, a system like ours. So we always try to keep lighters in here because uh, these are manual start um, propane stoves. So let's go ahead and start with the middle front. I turn it to light on. And there we go. Once it's lit, you can cook all you need. But it's imperative to make sure when you are done, make sure that you turn this to the complete off position. We also recommend people, whenever they leave the RV for the day, to go ahead and turn off the propane at the front. The water is not so important unless you're leaving for more than a day. But always turn the propane off if you're gone to the beach for the day, basically for more than four hours. We would recommend everyone to turn it off. And of course, as you can tell, everything is off right here. When it comes to the stove, we actually recommend people not to use them because RV stoves are very fickle and complicated. So every RV that we rent out, we always include a toaster oven if you need it. Just take it out and set it up and bake away for whatever you need to bake. For those that don't have any kind of uh, wireless account set up with like Netflix, but you still want to watch TV, uh, there's a thing called the Roku channel. Just select the Roku channel and it will load and then you have access to 140 live TV stations as if you had cable TV. So really easy to use, um, loading for the first time so it takes a little bit, but it allows you to watch a whole bunch of TV without any accounts. Next to the bed is the Wi-Fi device. This is a T-Mobile 5G home network device. So as you can tell, um, that is a good setup. I leave it right next to the window right here at the end. That's the best signal we're gonna get. And you're able to get about 40 to 50 megs download and upload. If you're ever having problems, you can feel free to disconnect it from the back, wait 30 seconds and reconnect it. And it does a little reboot and then you'll be good to go again. But that's how that works, real easy.